I cannot believe we are approaching the end of our individual income tax section. I love individual income taxes, in case you didn't know that yet. SDSU offers an entire 15-week semester course on individual income taxes. It's not available as an online course, but that might give you a sense as to how much we're trying to pack in to our one half of this course. In spite of all of that, welcome to video T14G on payments. I think it's safe to say that as taxpayers, payments are probably everybody's least favorite area. As students, however, I think we're going to like it. It's short and it's pretty easy. Okay, on with the show. By now, the overview ought to look pretty familiar to you. We're still working inside step six. This should look pretty familiar too. Here's page two of the 1040. And again, we're working on lines 16 through 18 at this point. Recall that U.S. income taxes are not paid at the time of filing. That instead, filing is a settling up process where we compare what the tax liability is with what has been paid during the year. If the amount paid exceeds the tax, the result is a refund. Otherwise, the taxpayer owes. You should be aware that the withholding tables employers use are constructed by the IRS and, generally speaking, result in a refund for most taxpayers. For non-employees, estimated tax payments must be paid. Estimated payments are not supposed to be made on the last day of the year, for example, December 31st. Instead, the rules require that quarterly estimated payments that are due in April, June, September, in January of the next year, payments are not supposed to be made on April 15th at the time of filing, although when taxes are due, they certainly are paid then. If you do not make payments at the scheduled dates in the appropriate amounts, a taxpayer will be charged penalties and interest. How draconian are the rules? Let's use Madge as an example. Her withholding was $999. When she completed her tax return in April, it turns out Madge had a liability of $1,000, which means she owes a dollar. For misestimation of this size, should Madge pay penalties and interest? The answer is of course no. The IRS has some reasonable rules in place that allow a taxpayer to misestimate their tax and pay in too little, but not be subject to penalties or interest. These rules are different for taxpayers above or below $150,000 in AGI. If AGI is $150,000 or less, the taxpayer must have paid in either 90% of this year's tax or 100% of last year's tax. If so, then no penalties or interest will be due. For the higher income taxpayers, the rules are a bit more strict. They must also pay 90% of this year's tax, but if they are relying on last year's tax, they must pay 110% of that amount. Because higher income taxpayers should have the resources available to them to better estimate their taxes, the rule is more strict. Let's read about Alicia. Since Alicia made less than 150000 she will be subject to the 90% 100% rules. 90% of her current year tax is 28,800. That's 32,000 times 90%. 100% of last year's tax is 30,300. Fortunately, Alicia's tax payments during the year total 30,000, which is more than 90% of the current year's tax. And so she will not be subject to penalties for underpayment. Irrespective of any penalties, all taxes due must be paid by April 15, or additional penalties and interest will start. And the taxes are due on the 15th, whether an extension is filed or not. Recalling Alicia, she will be required to make that additional $2,000 tax payment by April 15, or suffer late payment penalties. I promise short, and I meant it. This is the end of Chapter 14. On to Chapter 6 and Business Taxation. Thanks for watching.